Greetings, I'm Rainverse, the least consistent content creator you're aware of. With Dragon's Dogma 2 on the horizon, I thought it'd be a fun exercise to go back through the original Dragon's Dogma and cover the Arisen Cycle as portrayed in that game, so we can all look back on it and compare when Dragon's Dogma 2 inevitably upends everything we know about the lore. As always, I hate wasting time, mine or yours, so let's get into it. The rantings of an upjump zealot make for tedious listening. The appearance of the dragon marks the birth of a new Arisen, the beginning of a new tale after countless years. It is also one potential fate for an Arisen who fails at the end of their journey, for all dragons were once Arisen. They fought their dragon and won, but ultimately stumbled at the last possible moment, forcing them to forge the next link to earn freedom from the cycle. The purpose of the dragon is twofold. Its primary function is to seek out potential Arisen, one who holds a will strong enough to guide the world at journey's end. The second is to weed out those Arisen whose will is impure or simply not strong enough, all for the sake of moving the infinite cycle forward, and to earn their own salvation. We see three kinds of Arisen in Dragon's Dogma, all three key players in the story. First, there is Duke Edmund Dragonsbane, the previous Arisen. He had the will to fight the dragon when it appeared to him and set off on his own journey with trusted companions, but this was decades ago and he still appears to be a relatively young man. This is because the Duke balked in the face of his penultimate trial. When confronted by the dragon for a final time, Edmund lacked the resolve to win back his heart, and chose instead to sacrifice his most beloved person, Lenore, to the dragon. In doing so, he secured a form of immortality for himself, and with the dragon's promise to leave the land in peace until the next generation, he could claim it slain, which is how he won the title we see him with in-game. However, however, this choice would haunt Edmund for the rest of his life. The regret from sacrificing his beloved to the dragon would inevitably drive him to madness, and he lived with paranoia for fear of his former pawn arriving with a new arisen and revealing what he had done, which is why pawns are banned from entering the duke's palace. The second type of of Arisen is one who had the will to fight, but ultimately lacked the strength to do so. This is the Dragon Forged, an ancient Arisen who can only be perceived by other Arisen. In Dragon's Dogma, to be Dragon Forged is to be exposed to a Dragon's Flame. This is how you upgrade your equipment to Tier 4 in-game, so it can be assumed that the Dragon Forged was reduced to Ash by the Dragon. However, as the Dragon Forged does not know about the deal offered at the Tainted Temple, it is unlikely he made it to the final confrontation, yet he still persists because because the dragon is still in possession of his heart. The Dragon Forged also offers us the first glimpse at a concept that isn't really touched on until the very end of the game, pawns becoming their master. Over the years, the fool has slowly come to share the Dragon Forged's appearance, likely depicting him as he was during his fight with the dragon. You do see something similar in an optional side quest, but this isn't really relevant to the Arisen cycle. I just thought it was interesting. The third and final type of Arisen, as depicted in the original Dragon's Dogma, is, of course, the player's arisen, one who will succeed in their journey to reclaim their heart. But what does that mean? The Arisen, the fount of will round which the eternal cycle spins, a champion of man, the hero of their age. But despite all this, they are not the chosen one. The Arisen is one who chooses to fight, to bear witness to the overwhelming might of the dragon and run straight for it, heedless of the danger. Only one with an immense will can become the Arisen of their age. But even despite this, the Arisen is not called to any purpose, unchosen as they are. If the Arisen felt like it, they could shrug their quest and continue living their life without their heart. In time, another Arisen would be born and the cycle continued regardless. It is of the Arisen's own will that they pursue the dragon to reclaim their stolen heart. Throughout their journey, the Arisen is tested both by their fellow man as well as the beasts sent forth by the dragon, all this to forge the Arisen into a singular existence, one with the strength and will to shoulder the burden of the entire world, not just their homeland. The Arisen is an unparalleled warrior by nature. They would have to be if they hoped to best the dragon, but they are also master of the Pawn Legion, for it is the Arisen who breathes life into the Pawns. Without the will of an Arisen to guide them, the Pawns are little more than husks able to vaguely emulate people. As we will come to find, this is the first hint we get about the true nature of the Arisen, just a minor peak behind the veil of eternity. On the subject of pawns, they inhabit the rift between worlds where they speak of an infinite number of alternate worlds, each with its own Arisen, its own dragons, its own cycle, echoing on into eternity. Together with their pawns, the Arisen trudges forward through all adversity, each trial more formidable than the last, until eventually they meet Journey's End. What is your purpose here, Arisen? 
threatened. In the face of the dragon, the Arisen is given a choice, a simple question, do you have what it takes to win? A positive answer sees the Arisen locked in their final battle with the dragon, a fight to the death, the culmination of the fate of two Arisen, one who fell, and one who must rise. But what if the Arisen doesn't have the stones to finish the fight? Another path before you is to offer up that which you hold most dear. Abandon all delusions of control. For the price of a single life, I shall leave this land in peace. As my vanquisher, the duchy would bow to you. Wealth and power are sweet anodyne for heartache. You'll not gainsay my terms are more than generous. If it matters aught, the man who rules this land now won that honor through just such a bargain. Sacrifice. Power can be yours, but you've seen where that takes you, yes? No. It must be the fight. It falls to the Arisen to right the dragon's end, to grant them freedom, and win back their own. Because the dragon was never an enemy, it was a trial to be overcome. Death is mercy, and to win is to suffer. To victory over the dragon wins the Arisen's heart back as well as all the honor and prestige they could want. But with victory comes consequence. All those who came before, those who fell and those who stumbled, receive their hearts back as well. Time rushes to catch up, turning the ancient dragon forge to dust and reducing once mighty Duke Edmund to a withered old man. But that's not your problem, Arisen. You've won. Return to your home with your beloved. A happy ending to your story. And thus does the book close on the Arisen's journey. Did you think it was over? With the dragon's death, the world is sundered. The worst monsters roam freely as the world is cloaked in endless darkness. Is this the world you won? Is this what you wanted? No, of course not. But to find an answer, you must finish one more story. An ending only the Arisen can write. So it is, we must travel into those darkened skies. But to go up, we must first go down. Plummeting down into the Everfall, you descend and descend until you fall right into the hereafter. Is this heaven, or is it your hell? It well met, Arisen. I'll not waste time on rhetoric. Defeat me, and take my place as keeper of this world. You saw it awaiting you at the end of your descent. Aye, the same world you've traveled to arrive at this place. A world you may well now inherit. It is a simple proposition. No different than any you faced. You need only the will to claim what is offered you. The will to survive. It is here that the Seneschal awaits you, Arisen. They are the Maker, their God, the one whose will guides the whole of creation, just as the Arisen's will guides the pawn. Are you catching on? This is the final test. Prove that you have the strength to persist, else fail and be cast from the skies countless ages later to forge your successor. This isn't just a fight to survive, it's a fight to prove your right to exist, but more than that, it's a fight for the truth, the real truth of the world. Through this trial, the Maker shows off their supreme power, creating a perfect copy of the Arisen and killing it. Before the true confrontation, the Arisen is offered a final choice. Proceed forward and face the Maker, or turn back and be granted a merciful death. But we didn't come this far just to turn tail and run at the last second, did we? The Seneschal throws back his hood, revealing a familiar face, Savan, the Arisen you saw during the prologue, the last Arisen before you to slay the dragon and make their way to the Maker's throne. The ultimate purpose of the Arisen is to replace the one who came before as the Seneschal, to become the guiding will for the world once the previous has been wrung dry, all in the name of keeping the cycle going. Of course, to succeed Savan as the Seneschal, he needs to be slain. Before plunging the God's Bane blade into his chest, Savan will reveal the full truth of the world. The one thing he cannot reveal is why the cycle exists or how it started. He wasn't the first Arisen, obviously, as there was a dragon who had to fail, and for there to be a dragon, there had to be a Seneschal who succeeded. But Dragon's Dogma offers no insight as to how or why the cycle began. Although Savan claims the cycle to be like a ring with no defined end or beginning, basic knowledge of causality tells us there had to have been a first arisen, one who arrived to the throne of the world and found it empty, but we never learn of them. <laughs> 
mourn me not. For I welcome the release. At long last, I am free of eternity, of infinity, free of the cruel, unending ring. With Savan departed, all you can do is exist within the hereafter. Although you can sit upon the throne and return to the world below as an invisible ghost, no one can see you and you can't really interact with anyone in any meaningful capacity. The role of Seneschal is a lonely one, it seems, and this is your fate. The hereafter, your home for countless ages until the flame of your life is spent, and the time to welcome the blade of your successor comes, or so you would be led to believe. The Arisen is not guided by fate, but by will. Everything that has happened up to this point was the result of their own choices. Self-determination saw you to the seat of God, so why would you have no choice now? Your intended path is to simply wait for the next Arisen. At that time, you will cast down another dragon and hope some Arisen finds their way to you. But, perhaps without fully understanding what he was doing, Savan showed you an alternative. There is a way to escape Godhood. You just used it on your predecessor, after all. By equipping your own God's Bane blade awarded to you upon your defeat of the dragon. You have the option, the choice, to end the cycle. Who knows what would come to pass if you should do it, but you're not the risk-averse type, are you? And so the Arisen plunges the God's Bane blade into their own chest, falling back to earth with their main pawn in the process, their very soul annihilated by the blade. With this act, the Arisen grants true freedom to the world. Never again will there be an Arisen, never again a dragon, never again will Calamity visit the world from on high. But in that same moment, they grant their pawn humanity, allowing them to dwell within the flesh they've cast off. Who knows where we go from here? That's the end of this cycle, this world. But there are infinities upon infinities of other worlds, are there not? Maybe an answer to the question of who started the cycle to begin with waits in one of those distant worlds. We'll just have to wait and see. Okay, so I admit this one was slightly rushed. I'm gonna be honest with you, I've been distracted by nearly every game I've been wanting to play coming out within the past two months. And I slacked on my content. I can apologize, promise it won't happen again, but you know me too well at this point to be fooled by such ruses, yes? Next video is going to be a channel update where I'll go over what I've got planned going forward, as well as how often you can expect videos from this point on. Should be out next week, maybe? Won't be super long, so I'd appreciate if you watch it. Regardless, thank you for watching. As always, I've been Rainverse, and we will meet again, whether you like it or not.